Okay, so welcome back everyone to Romare Bearden Overlapping Meanings. Uh, my name is Sasha Giordano and I'm the Assistant Director at the Hofstra University Museum of Art. Um, before I begin, I just want to ask you to please leave your microphones on mute and you can ask questions and make comments via the chat box and there'll be time at the end of the presentation for any questions and um, we can answer any questions that you have then. In the chat, you'll notice that we did post the PDF for you. So if you just again need to kind of refer to the you know, supply list that you need for today, that's there for you, as well as the book list that Hempstead Library very generously put together for us um, with a list of you know, further reading about Rom Romare Bearden and his life. Um, again, just a note that this session is being recorded. And session number one, a treasured gift Romare Bearden's art in the museum's collection that is already available for your viewing on our website. And you can go ahead and catch up on that if you missed it. And two and three will be showing up on our website shortly, as will this one. We do have a hands on demonstration video that's part of this um, presentation, and that can also be found on our website on the virtual museum page. So um, my suggestion is to kind of watch it in its entirety and then you can kind of go back and review, but I'll get back to that in a second. So again, just a reminder, this is the fourth session in our series, Romeo Bearden Overlapping Meetings. And um, this is, you know, the fourth and we have one more next weekend, uh, next, next Friday, excuse me. It's the same Zoom link and we'll be sending out that reminder email just as we have been in an email confirmation. So you'll get that reminder from us. So as I mentioned, today is our virtual family art activity and it's titled Creating Personal Narrative Through Collage. And, you know, hopefully you have your supplies ready. Again, here's the list for you. Um, my, again, our suggestion is that you kind of watch the demonstration in its entirety and then again, go back and rewatch it if you want over the, you know, over the weekend, or you can kind of work along with it if you're all set to go and you have everything ready um, by all means, you know, feel free to do that. So I'm going to explain a little bit about um, collage and I'm going to give some examples or an example of Bearden's work. And then I'm going to show you that video and then I'll be able to answer any questions that you may have after that video as well. So that's kind of the format that we will follow today. So starting with a quote from the artist, if you're any kind of artist, you make a miraculous journey and you come back and make some statements and shapes and colors of where you were. And last week, right, we visited virtually the EFA Blackburn studio and we saw the very complicated process of lithography that Romare Bearden um, used to tell stories and he used shapes and colors through that process. And today for our hands-on art activity, we're gonna employ a different technique and a different method, another way to make statements and shapes and colors, which is a little easier, one that you can do at home, which is called collage and Romare Bearden used this frequently as well. So three techniques used in collage that we want you to think about today when we're looking at an example of his work and when you're making your project is color blocking, layering of figures, materials, and objects, and then the use of exaggeration. So those are three things that you want to keep in mind. Um, collage is a good way to preserve memories, right? It's a collection of materials. It's a collection of images and they intersect and they tell a story. And Romare Bearden, he uses historically important details that enhance that narrative, right? Such as particular places and locations, but he uses those particulars in combination with his imagination and his creativity. And by weaving those things together, right? Like some specific places with this kind of intense sense of imagination and creativity, sometimes almost dreamlike scapes, really creates authenticity and really kind of gives you a little bit about his DNA and his personal memory in his life. So, you know, keep those things in mind while you're making your project. So a really good example to start with is the piece that you see in front of you here, which is called The Block. And it was made by Romeo Bearden in 1971. And for a minute, just take a, take a minute to look at the materials that he's used, right? Cut and pasted, printed, colored and metallic papers, photostats, that's the black and white 
images that you see on this piece here, graphite, ink marker, gouache, watercolor, and ink on masonite. So all of this is affixed to masonite, which is like a compressed board, right? So it's not quite wood, it's a little bit lighter than wood, and he, you know, affixed everything to this hard surface. And take a look at the size, right? 48 by 18 feet. So this is a really large collage that he's made. Um, this piece is not part of our collection. It's part of the Metropolitan Museum of Arts collection. And we are, you know, they're very generous with their images and we're viewing that here. So just first looking at the piece, a little bit of, bit of background about it. The block is really a tribute to Harlem, right? And this is the neighborhood in New York City that nurtured both the life and the work of the artist Romier Bearden. Although he was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, he spent a lot of time, a lot of his childhood in New York. And in 1940, he establishes his first studio in Harlem at 306th West 125th Street. And that's actually in the same building as the artist Jacob Lawrence and the poet novelist Cloud McKay. And there's actually a group of artists that call themselves a 306 group because they're all at this central location. So it's like a real vibrant group of creative artists working together. Um, I want you to take a look at the photograph that I have beneath the collage, and that's the Harlem Tenement Houses, 1943. And so again, this is a space that he inhabited, he knew really well, uh, you know, probably like just imprinted on his mind and his memory. And it's in 1971, right, almost 30 years later, that he makes this collage based on his memory and his experiences and the energy that he experienced uh, in his time in Harlem. So when we look at, you know, this really big, beautiful collage in front of us, we can see that Bearden does use the three techniques that I just mentioned to you previously. So there are these large areas, right, such as the buildings and the sky, that are created by using these really large blocks of flat, bright color that you see in front of you. And then there are these other smaller images that are layered over these blocks. And, and they're in different textures and they're in different colors and they're also different materials and they're in different sizes, right? So you can kind of take in the piece and you can take in the big blocks of color and then you wanna get really close to it because you wanna see what all of those small layered images are and what kind of story they tell. And again, you can see that kind of follow with my pointer. I think you can see this here where there's this small space, right? Where we kind of get into the building. It's almost like we have, a, it's almost like it's transparent and you can kind of peek in um, versus like this larger sign of the liquor store giving us like this detailed location. So real people inhabit the space, even though their elements are exaggerated. And, you know, he really plays with scale in the use of exaggeration. And some examples are, you know, where you have, um, and again, I'm going to you can follow my pointer here, this really large figure, right, juxtaposed to smaller figures on the street and this large light bulb that we have over here, right? So you have this different sense of scale, but yet you believe that these people inhabit this really busy city street that you see in front of you. And not everything lines up perfectly, you know, and, and that's okay because it all kind of comes together and there's a uniformity in the way he's treating the materials and the colors as well. A little bit about the space, right? Um, I was going to comment on like these groups of people that are kind of in like this quasi foreground, right? Because this kind of reads really flat. And because he, you know, uses this color blocking technique and this layering material, he's using a very different sense of space. And this is a really non-Western, non-traditional flat sense of space, right? It's almost kind of like an Eastern use of space in a way. It doesn't follow like the traditional linear perspective. And what I mean by that is like, that dot on the horizon line, where there's a horizon line and there's a dot and then everything converges to that dot on the horizon line. Maybe you even remember doing some kind of class project where you had to draw a room or you had to draw a cityscape or something where, you know, you have all of these orthogonals going back to that dot on the horizon line. And that's really a traditional way of showing space. And that's not what he's doing here. It's really flat. And it's interesting because instead of us being brought into that space, which is like a traditional way of showing space in art, we're kind of more confronted with this. And it, it kind of comes into our space, right? And it makes it really, really accessible. And it allows us to experience it in a really, really immediate way as we interact with the people on the street here. There's a real vibrancy that radiates from the work as it depicts a really lively urban scene. 
So just some details for you so you can kind of get even closer to it and see things um, you know, in greater detail. And as we enter this you know, prototypical city block, we find really private moments of tenement life like standing opposite like these bigger wider scenes you know the outside of the buildings and a really good example of that is right here right this like bird's eye view where again it's almost like that building has become transparent and we're brought inside and we see this figure sitting in profile and again the figures being in like that black and white photostat material versus the bright coloration of the buildings and we were kind of brought inside into his really quiet space and then, you know, opposite that is the recognizable sign again of the liquor store or the street light or the, or the, you know, the marks on the road to indicate where, you know, where the corner stops and the street begins. So a lot of groups of people, again, are clustering all around what I'm calling like this quasi foreground because he doesn't use a real sense of like foreground, middle ground, background. But we do get this sense that like they're in front of those buildings and Again, there's exaggeration, right, within even those groups of some of them are a little bigger than others or they're combinations of people. Um, but we can almost hear them chatter, right? We can almost hear them talking to each other as they stand in front of the materials. And one thing to think about is how like the variety of the materials and the textures really emphasize and underscore the diversity that's found on this like really busy flourishing city street. Another detail for you, part of this scene, the block. Um, I want you to think about the way that, again, he uses these universal locations. Like, what do we see? We see brownstones, we see apartment buildings, um, maybe not in here, you know, in, the, in its entirety. Um, a funeral home is included, a barber shop in the next scene is included, the liquor store that I've pointed at a few times already. And all of those exterior spaces, they combine with the residents' private spaces. Right? So you get this outside and this inside at the same time. Um, and he does that again by layering the images, exaggerating and layering the images. And these images give the viewer a concrete, no pun intended, right? But concrete locations that you can find in any city, right? but they're also unique to Bearden's experience. We have images of the Annunciation of Christ and his angels are also part of the scene. And again, kind of underscoring that the needs of a community are not just the physical, but also the spiritual. And if you look up in the corner over here, you can see, you know, one of the examples where, where we see this angel and we immediately identify the iconography, right? Her halo and wings. And then over here we have um, maybe reference to that evangelical church that I mentioned. Overall, again, we experience this exuberant intellectual energy of, Har you know, of Harlem. And Harlem was, you know, the center of Black intellectual life in the U.S. And that's what he shows us here. So one more detail before we move on to our hands-on activity. Um, again, it's just taking it in and seeing how he captures scenes of everyday life. And by doing that, his work has a universality to it. His personal narrative and his memories become part of our collective consciousness because we can relate and we can connect with these viewers. Maybe we've never been there, but yet we're, there are things that we can kind of recognize. And again, he makes this so accessible to us in the way that he kind of utilizes the materials of collage. Um, other things that I want you to think about, you know, again, the use of exaggeration and a good example of that is here, if you can kind of follow my pointer, like to these windows, right, up top instead of giving you like a small intimate scene, right? Like in the first one where you saw that man sitting in profile and you saw his whole body and you saw the stairs, here are people who inhabit this apartment building are just shown by a portion of a face, right? So he's really kind of, again, playing with scale and exaggeration, even when he's dealing with the same theme, right? Which is of people. So, you know, before we go to our demonstration, like I said, we have a video for you from one of our educators that I'm going to start in a minute. You know, you take the time, collect your materials, but then also like reflect on a moment or a place that is significant to your life. You know, think about the colors that you might want to use. Think about how you would want to arrange them and how you would want to layer them. Um, think about what you would want to exaggerate right, to kind of maybe emphasize, because exaggeration can also be a way of emphasizing something. 
And again, when you choose your images, it's good to ask yourself, like, does my collage imagine? Does it personalize, capture, integrate, transform? Does it release? Does it symbolize, recall? Does it inform and does it elevate, right? Because those are all words that we can use when we describe um, Romeo and Bearden's collages. And also think about how you can use these three techniques that I've mentioned when you create your collage, right? And that's going to be color blocking, layering, and exaggeration. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing this screen and then I'm going to open up the demo video and it's about 14 minutes in length. And again, you can feel free to follow along or you can watch it and then access it later and then create your collage um, after the fact. So I'm gonna start that for you now. Unless there's any questions, Karen, that you think we need to go into right away? No, we're, we're good so far, thank you. Okay, so this is Amy Solomon. She is one of our museum educators and she is going to take you through a step-by-step -step, um, explanation of how you can make a collage in the style of Romeo Bearden. Hi, it's Amy Solomon from the Hofstra University Museum of Art. Today we're going to do a quick art activity inspired by Romero Bearden and his collage technique. You will need a piece of white paper. This is going to be your work surface for building your collage. You will need the three or so pieces of colored construction paper. You will need a glue stick, scissors if you have them, and if you don't, you can tear paper to make a collage, so that works well. And you'll also need the magazine swipes. So these are the smaller pieces of magazine pages that we're going to use. So Romare Bearden was an American artist. One of the techniques that he used was collage. And collage is basically taking different materials. We call that mixed media when you use more than one art material in an artwork and gluing them, adhering them to another surface and creating a mixture or a collage presentation. So Romare Bearden used the technique of layering and color blocking in his background. So the first step we're going to do is to provide and make that color block on the back of our work surface. So take your white construction paper, put it down on top of your work surface, and you're going to have your three pieces of colored construction paper and your glue stick and your scissors ready for this part. So here is my blank canvas, my piece of paper that I'm working on. And I'm going to kind of try to arrange the colors that I am using in a way that I like. I may have to cut them to fit them onto my white paper, but a collage is sort of like a puzzle. So before you commit to gluing anything onto paper, we ask that you kind of play with your composition or how you're going to arrange the pieces that you're working with. So I love this purple, but I also really like this yellow. So I think I'm gonna use yellow as my main bigger piece. And then I'm gonna fill in these two spaces um, that I have here, the blank white with a little bit more of my paper. And I'm just gonna have to cut a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. I'll cut this purple kind of in half to be able to fit that. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of that space with my brown color. So I'm just gonna size that up and cut the size that I need. Okay, so here's my color block. I'm going to now take my glue stick and I'm going to glue these pieces down. Remember, we can um, the best way to glue is always to apply your glue to your work surface, not to the pieces here that you're using. It just makes it a little bit easier. I don't really need too much of this glue. I'm going to line it up. Okay, my yellow. 
have my purple and I have this brown that I'm going to add to cover up the remaining white space. I have a little more glue than that. Okay. All right. So now we have that color blocking look the same way that the inspiration art did from um, Romir Bearden. If you need to add more glue to your workspace, you can go ahead and do that. Make sure everything's sticking down. So we have our color black background, and the next thing that we're going to do is just kind of layer a little bit more detail. Now, I'm working with my magazine strips, swipes. Before you commit, again, to gluing anything to your paper, make sure that you're really looking, thinking about your inspiration from Romare Bearden. So remember, he used a lot of figures in his collages. They had that sort of dreamlike quality, like it was telling a story, but you had to really think about or be creative with what type of story it was telling. So um, I would look for figures in your magazine swipes. And also he used that technique of exaggeration. So I'll show you an example of what I did. Um, I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna show you that I found a few figures in my magazine swipes that I was using. Here's one of them. I just love the colors and I love her bright red lips. So I'm gonna use this as kind of my main figure for my collage. And again, I'm working on my workspace here. I'm gonna kind of plan it out a little bit before I glue it onto my background. So my next step here is I have this nice figure, but now I wanna work on sort of some exaggeration of this figure. So I'm going to um, take part of another um, person that I found. You can see that I kind of cut out part of this person's face. And I'm going to use that half of the face on this um, main figure, and it's going to create some exaggeration. So I'm going to go ahead and put my figure together right now. Okay, so now she went from one figure to kind of now she has almost like two halves to her. So it just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. And again, you guys are using your magazine swipes, um, but you should kind of go ahead and be a little bit creative with that. So I also like the way Romare Bearden used big kind of, he used bigger hands. Again, that idea of exaggeration. So again, I cut actually from that same figure, um, I cut her very large hand compared to my main figure that I'm using here in my workspace. And I'm going to kind of glue this hand to my main figure. And that's gonna kind of help a little bit with that idea of exaggeration. Okay, so now we just have something a little more interesting than that original figure that we started to work with. So. I kind of want to add this figure now to my background, but I am going to add a little bit more um, layering to this. So I'm actually going to show you how you can take, I like using a little bit of print from my magazine swipes, and I like giving it a little bit of a rougher look. So I'm actually going to tear this and not use my scissor to cut it out. I used a scissor to cut my figure out because I wanted to make sure to get the exact figure. But for this, I'm actually just going to tear and it's gonna leave some rough edges, which I think I'm gonna like. So I'm gonna tear it into strips and you can see now that I have a little bit of a rough edge. I kind of like that. So I'm just gonna add that kind of randomly to my background somewhere. I'm not even really sure what this says, but remember Romare Bearden said his collage is kind of um, ends up a little bit maybe unexpected, not quite what he envisioned them when he started, but you're working with magazine strips and all that kind of stuff. So you might not get exactly what you thought you were going to get. I'm going to add the other piece again to my background. And this is again, a little bit of layering technique that I'm using here. So play with this. And you might find that as you're adding things, you want to build up the background a little bit. And you can do that. You don't have to do everything in perfect order. I would get your color block on the background first, then maybe add some more details, then add your figure that you might have created 
to your background. Okay, I'm going to keep working. I do have more magazine swipes. I'm going to look for some more um, prints. I'm also going to look for maybe some black and white for my background since I'm using really bright colors. And remember, I think pairing some of your pieces is actually kind of interesting. So makes it a little more interesting than just having those neat cut out um, uh, pieces of paper. So I'm going to use that tearing technique. And remember, I'm kind of just creating things as I go. And I'm not too worried about my final product yet, even though I do want to make sure that I leave room for my figure that I'm putting in there. So I think I'm actually ready to add my figure. I just kind of have to decide where I want this figure. Um, since she's the main one, I think I'm going to put her in the center of my piece. So again, I'm going to use my glue stick. I'm going to add glue stick to my work surface. And then I'm going to add my uh, magazine piece, my figure. And I'm going to put her in the middle. OK. Now, she looks a little lonely. So I'm going to go back to my magazine swipes. And I'm going to see if there are any other figures that I could add. Um, and I found this beautiful, beautiful face in one of my magazine swipes. So I think I'm going to tear this one a little bit. And then I'm going to add it to my, uh, my background. Okay, So I'm going to tear it so that the edges aren't perfect. I like the way that looks. And I kind of end up with this, Okay, torn around the edges. I'm going to add this face as just kind of another accent piece. Remember, I'm playing with this. Here's what I'm working with so far. But I'm kind of just playing with it and deciding how I want the final composition to look like. And I'm kind of just placing this somewhere that I like. And I'm kind of testing it out before I actually glue it down. So I think I've decided where I want to put this. Again, I'm kind of layering on top. I'm going to add the glue to my work surface first. And then I add my piece. And you can see that I've now added, in this one area of my collage, I've added three layers. I have my color block background. I have this other sort of layer of background, my print, that black and white that looks really kind of good on top of the color. And then I've added my figure here. OK? Now, if I wanted to go back in, I could probably find more um, places where I could maybe exaggerate some of these features here, but I do see a hand in one of my pieces that I have to work with, so I'm actually going to use that. Okay, I have this picture here, and I'm going to use her hand that I see and see if I can add that in as a little bit of kind of an exaggerated feature. I did manage to include an arm on the bottom here of my collage. So I'm just going to cut the edge there so you can really kind of clearly see that hand. And I'm going to add it here where there might have been a hand on my magazine swipe. So I'm really just layering and I'm kind of creating this kind of dreamlike fantasy reality here. OK, now my last piece, I like to add a little, maybe a little bit of sense of humor to my um, my collage. So I found this really cute black and white dog. So I'm going to add that dog. And I kind of think I'm going to cut around the dog because I want to see what it looks like just on its own. I could add it maybe here somewhere. But I like the idea of maybe adding him like he's floating in space. Okay, Similar to the way Romer Bearden, when he created his collage, kind of made it look like it was this dreamscape, like it could be happening, but where is it happening? I don't really know. I'm not giving too much um, detail on the place that it's happening in and having these figures sort of floating around um, makes it even more of like a guessing game that you're going to play to tell the story. Okay, so I cut out my little doggo. I'm going to decide where I want to put him. And I, I do have a lot of blank space on top here, so I'm going to try to fill him up. I'm going to put him in the corner over here. Maybe he's trying to get away from these figures. 
So let me glue them down and I'll show you what I mean. So remember, I put my glue on my work surface, then I add my piece, and now I have this sort of interesting um, collage story. But I might want to go back in when I'm done, and I might want to now decide what is this story that I'm trying to tell here. Um, I didn't start out with a story in mind. I just started with a background and some figures in it. But now I've added this dog, and I think now I'm kind of thinking like the dog is a little bit trying to get away from maybe these two people, or maybe they're looking for this dog. I don't know. We'd have to kind of think about the story that your collage is telling. So when you're done with your collage, see if you can give it a title, and maybe that title will give the viewer a little bit of an idea of the story that you created with your collage. Okay, have fun with it. Okay, so I'm gonna just stop that share and go back to the PowerPoint. And hopefully you can all see that well. And so, you know, just remind you that that video is accessible on our website. You can rewatch it. So you can kind of go through it again um, if you want to kind of revisit this or if you're looking for something to do over the weekend and you, you know, didn't work while Amy was working and you want to do that later. So be sure to visit our website so you can access that video. And um, you can see Amy used the combination of techniques that I mentioned earlier that Ramir Bearden uses. And she was a little more organic in her approach, right? And that's fine. You know, you can be um, a little more, you know, a little slower. You could be more thoughtful. You can map things out. Um, you can make your narrative extremely personal uh, to, again, specific places, locations, and people that, that you know. Or you can kind of let it take on a life of its own and kind of play with the images and see what story you come up with. Regardless, it's a lot of fun to work in this way because um, you can kind of rearrange things and you can use a variety of materials, which is always really exciting and fun to do. So I'm just gonna show you, um, these are two examples that Amy had done, two different examples. And if you go through the process and you create your collage, we would love to see your finished work. So please consider sharing that um, on Instagram and use the hashtag Huma from home so we can kind of see what you've done and see your finished project. So are there any questions? This is a great point to kind of uh, stop and pause and see if there are any questions. I don't have a question yet, but I did put the link to the video in the chat. So if anybody wants to go to the chat to pick up the, the video link, that's a little bit more direct. Yeah, so, that would yeah. be great. So, um, yeah, so if, you're, if you have any questions about, in particular, the piece, the block, or any comments or questions on that, or about the process that Amy um, just demonstrated for us, please feel free. You can turn your mics on if you want, if you're more comfortable doing that, or just go ahead in the chat and, and post your questions. And I can just kind of go back to, I'll just go back quickly um, before I move on to our next. And this is just, again, another view of that whole, you know, that whole view of the block, of that collage that he, had, you know, that he had worked on. Um, I did have a question about whether this was being recorded. And yes, it is the whole program. And it will be on our website. It usually takes us a week or so to get them up at least. Um, so it, it will be accessible on our on our website at the time. Yeah, but the video that Amy Solomon just did is right now on our website, yes. so you're able to access that. So if you're thinking of questions, um, that's great. Go ahead and post them. And in the meantime, I'm going to just give you a reminder that next Friday, March 4th at three o'clock, is our final in this series, Romere Beard and Overlapping Meanings. And this will be calling it Last Stop Q&A with the museum director, Karen Albert. And we've been you know, keeping a record of some questions that have been asked that maybe need a little bit of a longer answer. Um, you can come to that session with your own questions and, and you know, we can have a little bit more of a discussion and again, have the entire session so we can kind of delve deep and, and give you more thorough answers to some questions that you might have.
Oh, Sasha, we have a question from Anne. She wants to know, did Romare Bearden decide upon a theme beforehand? It seems that all of his work developed from a life experience or point of view. Well, and, and you can add to this too, Karen, but I think that he very much, you know, drew upon his own life experiences and, and very much had specific places and locations um, that really meant something to him in mind when he was creating his art. And that's different from what Amy was suggesting and how she was working. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think um, Romare Bearden very much was um, drawing from his own personal life and things that he saw, like for example, the whole um, collage about the block. That was where he lived. Those were things he saw daily. So, you know, this is this definitely what he drew. He drew definitely drew from his own personal experience. And to a certain extent, you have to plan it out a little bit. I mean, there is a there is a there is a, a bit of freedom in, in working at working out your design. And as Amy has shown in the video, you know, you can play around with the pieces before you glue them down. That's kind of a good thing about collage is you can move things around a lot before you actually glue them down, so you can kind of see see what you like best and what might work best. Right. Yeah, and I think a, a good example of that too is if you look at how most of the buildings like the ground line does kind of line up and that does take a little bit of planning and so far as composition um does that answer your question yeah yes she's um right. and, and nick says did he use copies of his own work in his collages mm. that's a that's a good question um my guess would be, and again, Karen might be able to speak to this more specifically, is that he probably repeated some images because maybe he had like certain prototypes that he gravitated to. Um, but but I, it seems as though most of these are kind of originals in his work. But where's your... I, I mean, I think, I don't know about copies of his own work. He definitely did things like he made photostats of like the African masks and things and use those. And he would use those in different works. So he might he might make, you know, 10 or 12 copies of different African masks and use them in a couple different works of art. Mm -hmm. um, most of his printmaking work that we have in our collection was based on a collage, where he had done a collage, which is a one of a kind piece. And then he made prints kind of based on that collage so we could make it in multiple. So that kind of answers your question. <laughs> so it's kind of almost like he did a combination of them. Yeah, I was going to say it's kind of a yeah, a little bit a of a question. good question. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Anything else? Well, if not, um, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you enjoyed the activity and we hope you complete it. And again, please post it um, on Instagram using that hashtag humor from home. And if you don't already, you know, by all means, please follow us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And it's a great way to stay connected with us and stay on top of all the great events that we have. Um, and again, and there's our website, as well, so you can kind of catch up on maybe any of the events that you've missed. So mm -hmm. thank you everyone for your great comments. We really hope you enjoyed it. Everybody's just lots of thank yous in the chat. Yes. Oh, thanks, Jane. I'm glad that you enjoyed the, um, you know, I tried to have it, the block that you can see it in its entirety and then kind of give you those little details. You can see a little more up close. Well, I think also that you had the photograph of Harlem. Oh, yes. You had the photograph of the block at ha in Harlem. I see that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I read it too quickly. Yeah. 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 Good comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice to see. Great. So I think have fun with it. Collage, I think, is fun and easy, you know. Yep. You don't have to know how to draw, right? <laughs> right. Well, it's sort of done for you a bit. Yeah. 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 Great. So... Yeah. Be creative, everyone. Enjoy, enjoy the project.
And if you have any questions that we didn't answer in the last couple of sessions or something you wanted to know more about, you could certainly uh, send us an email. Just, to, just respond to the link and we'll get that email. Yep, we can answer your questions. Yep, and we're going to kind of do a little wrap up next week. And we had some questions early on that we kind of answered, but we wanted to answer them more fully. So we're going to answer some of those comparisons more fully and stuff like that. So. so we look forward to seeing you again next week. Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to. And I'm going to to stop recording.